Oh, hello and welcome to BST Live. Glad you could join us today where we're going to be talking about swing trading. In fact, we're going to be talking about short-term swing trading. So let's get to it. So good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Thanks for joining us today. Apologies that we're running a couple minutes late. Um, we had an issue, but uh, it's all sorted and we're ready to go. So uh, let's get straight into it today. We're going to be talking with um, Ivan from Ivanhoff Capital. Ivan is um, a successful uh, portfolio manager and founder of Ivanhoff Capital. He's been trading equities and options for 18 years, and he has been on the show before. Um, we were, um, uh, what was it, April 2017 we last spoke, Ivan, welcome. And we were talking about protect and grow capital during market correction. So a lot has happened since then. Um, but welcome. How are you doing? I'm good, Andrew. Thanks for having me. Excellent. Well, as I mentioned before um, our last chat, we were talking about um, protect and grow capital during market corrections. And uh, if people want to hear that one, it's still very timely today. Uh, that was episode 88 on bettersystemtrader.com slash 88. But today we're going to be talking about a different topic, Ivan, another one that's, uh, that you're a specialist in, and that is swing trading, in fact, short-term swing trading. Um, so before we get into that, though, can you just give us a little bit of um, your background uh, on yourself and how you got started in the markets? I mean, I started 18 years ago, initially uh, investing in the Bulgarian market. I was born in Bulgaria. Uh, later, I moved to the States uh, to study and started trading the U.S. markets. Um, I spent a few, a few years working for stock tweets. Then I left. Um, started working with Howard Linsen um, at one of his um, uh, venture firms, and you know during that time I just kept uh, trading my account. Mm. Yeah. And uh, about two years ago I joined uh, Zor Capital. I'm a portfolio manager there, so I manage other people's money there. Um, and that's about it. Yeah. Okay. So how did you? Um it started in swing trading like what what was it about that style that really appealed to you i mean one, one of the best benefits of swing trading is that uh, you can achieve market bidding returns with much slow uh, much smaller drawdowns uh, the average drawdown um, of the of the market is about 14 15% a year especially like smaller caps uh, the, we're talking uh, rest of 2000 so you, you can achieve better returns with smaller uh, drawdowns uh, by just uh, being active and being in the right stock uh, at the right time uh, and just uh, selling on strength. Mm, yeah. So swing trading basically is well, your average short-term swing trading, your average holding periods between two to five, maybe, maybe 10 days. So you're yeah. trying to capture that sweet spot when the stock is actually moving, um, could be up or down, uh, because most stocks spend 80% 80, 80 of their time they just spent in consolidation mm. and only 20% are trending. So the purpose of, uh, of swing trading is to be in those stocks when they're trending, trending up or down and to avoid the rest of the period so you can compound your capital much faster with a smaller drawdown along the way. Right, okay. So is that one of the main drivers for doing short-term swing trading compared to longer term is that um, you know, eighty percent of the time, the mar the stocks aren't really going anywhere. Yes, one of the main, but also it depends on on your skill, on your personality. You know, not everyone is um, you know have the personality or the time to be a short term uh, trader. Uh, and a, a good position trader, you know, where you hold stocks for multiple months, can achieve similar returns to a good swing trader, but. Uh, his or her drawdowns will just be much bigger uh, because yeah. every, every time, if you if you sell all, all the stocks you own, every time you're up 20%, you're never going to achieve a double or a triple. But to achieve a double or a triple, you have to be able to stomach multiple 20, 30% pullbacks along the way. Uh, and in some cases, even 50%. Uh, if you own like some, a high beta, uh, high momentum stock. So that's not for everyone. Uh, while swing trading, you limit like your average loss will be four or 
uh, and then you're you're trying to to get 10 to 20 percent gain, quick gain, you know, two to five days, uh, maybe 10 in some uh, in some occasions. So, um, yeah, what was your question actually? <laughs> <I think it's laughs> we, no, you, you absolutely answered it. I asked why short short term swing, and um, you answered that really well. And you actually you kind of alluded to a couple of the important factors you find. Uh, that you think are important for swing trading. Can you just talk a little bit more about what, what actually do you, what are you looking for in swing trades? Like what factors do you find are important? Okay, so I mean, we can talk about the technicals, the setups, but before mm. we get to there, I think the two most important factors are the, the market environment, like the current market, if, if the market is in an uptrend, if it's in a, a sideways range, or if it's in a downtrend, uh, so this is the the most important factor because if you're trying to buy breakouts or buy in anticipation of a uh, of a breakout in a range bound market or in a downtrending market, you're gonna lose money. It doesn't matter how great great of a setup you're gonna find. Mm. Uh, opposite, if you try to short during strong markets, it doesn't matter how great the setup is uh, on average, you're gonna lose money. So the market environment is, is number one. Uh, number two is the the sector, the industry strength. Because um, if you're in the right industry, uh, most of your mistake will be forgiven uh, for, for the most part because <laughs> stocks move, move in groups. And uh, once you find the right industry, most of those industry moves last uh, several weeks and in some cases to many, many months. Um, so once you get those two things right, then it's a lot easier after that to you know, find the right uh, the right vehicles, and mm. for me personally, I look for for stock that um, uh, have higher than average volatility. For example, the average uh, daily range is at least uh, four or five percent for the past month. Their uh, average ADR is at least four dollars for the past month. So I'm looking for stock that you know trade higher ranges, and then I'm looking for established momentum on the long side, and then I'm looking for some. Um, consolidation sideways or a little pullback and then looking for some tight range consolidation in really one candle, two candles, so I can enter with a very tight stop. And for example, if, if the stock ATR, the average two range, or day range is, is for example, 4%, if I can find a place to enter with only 2% stop, that's a great entry because I'm only risking 2% yeah. and that stock on average is 4% a day. So there is a very high, uh, higher likelihood that I can uh, capture a move that will be bigger than my risk, especially if you take into account, you know, the right market environment, the right industry, and then a, a, the right vehicle and a good setup. When you stack all those odds in your favor, then even if you're right only 50% of the time, you can still make good money when you mm -hmm. stack all those uh, things in your favor. Yeah. Yeah. So you gave us some examples of the things you're looking for in individual stocks, but uh, obviously from what you just said, the, the market environment is a very uh, critical piece to that puzzle. And I guess there's a lot of ways you can measure uh, the current market environment or the context of the trades. What things do you look at to measure the markets, uh, the market environment is a good, good one for you? I mean, I look, I look at many different things, but the, the number one is the price action in uh, leading stocks, in momentum stocks. If all of a sudden they start to uh, break down below, below their 20-day uh, uh, moving averages, that's a major warning sign. Uh, if all of a sudden I start seeing a breakout starting to fade or uh, some of the setups that I take uh, are starting to uh, reverse, that, that's, a, that's a major signal. A secondary signal is uh, uh, obviously the price action in the main indices. Uh, typically, every uh, bull market has a leading, uh, have a, a few leading uh, sectors or ETFs. For example, currently one of the leading ETFs is that um, ARKK ETF. Uh, and if you look at these charts, in, in most in most cases, every pullback to its uh, rising 20-day has been bought, uh, and then all of a sudden it's it start to break. You start to break below it. You know that's a major warning sign. You know also sec like other leading sectors like biotech, uh, clean energy. Uh, when you see those types of leading sectors all of a sudden breaking below their 20-day, even below their 50-day, that's a major warning sign. So when you have all those things, you know the price action in the leading stocks, 
in, in the leading sectors, they're giving you clues mm. yeah. that something is changing and then you need to slow down a little bit uh, yeah. on the yeah. long side. That, uh, I mean, you, you can always, uh, you know, find ideas on the short side, you know, uh, because the, the very same stocks that were great, that offer great long opportunities, those same momentum stocks uh, during an uptrend, they'll be great uh, short vehicles, uh, you know, during downtrends, because most of them are going to give back 50% or more of, uh, of their upside move. So um, basically, you can stick to, to the same 200, you know, quarter stocks and just trade them on both sides. You know? hmm. Yeah, yeah. Uh, do you treat um, the short side a little bit differently to the long side? Uh, I guess, especially in times when the market is going through some periods of stress, it can get very volatile for the short side. So do you take that into account when you're looking at uh, long versus short or how do you adapt to that? I mean, on the short side, I often buy um, put options or I would buy like put spreads or sell call spreads or or when I short the individual stocks, I um, mostly do it intraday just because I don't want to have the risk of uh, holding overnight. Mm. Uh, because even during downtrends, even during corrections, we, uh, the market are very choppy and you know, they can easily gap 5% up or down. So it's a lot riskier to, um, to hold anything overnight uh, during corrections. This is why if I'm going to swing for you know, multiple days, I'd rather own an option contract where uh, my maximum loss will be limited to the total premium I pay. Wow. If you hold an equity long or short, I mean, it can easily gap above your uh, stop loss, so you can lose mm-hmm. more money. So during those times, you need to be a little bit more careful. Um, so yeah, I mean, yeah. this is the main this is the main difference. Like in in a in a bull market, which is usually a low correlation co- correlation market, I don't mind you know holding overnight. You know, sometimes even being on margin uh, overnight, um, being long equities. But during corrections, I usually um, keep a larger cash position. And um, if I'm short on equity, I often do it intraday. And then remember, during correction, the, ra- the intraday ranges are much wider. They are usually three, three four times uh, bigger than uh, during uh, uptrends. So you can achieve you know, the same returns uh, intraday than you would achieve uh, holding that stock for several days uh, mm. in a bull market on the long side. Yeah, yeah. So if we just um, uh, talk about the, the current market environment, you've got a show called Momentum Mondays. Um, it's kind of obvious what it is about based on the title, but you, you, uh, you talk about momentum plays in the market and it seems like uh, the current market environment in a lot of markets is ideal for swing trading. So if you have a, an environment where you get a lot of opportunities, how do you how do you become more selective? Like, is there a process you use to determine which ones have a higher potential than others? Yeah, I mean, you need to figure out the, the one or two leading industries at the time, like the hottest trading topics, like early in January, that was uh, clean energy. It was uh, cannabis stocks. Uh, it was um, all the highly shorted stocks. So... And then most recently, it was all the recovery plays like uh, leisure, airlines, hotels, uh, casinos, cruise lines. Mm. So every week, every one or two weeks, you see a change, you know, as I said, stocks trading teams. So there is a different hot team. So you need to be paying attention to uh, the market narrative because that the, the hot topics are changing. Yeah. And then, and obviously also all the... All the crypto-related stocks were super hot too uh, earlier in the year because of the move in Bitcoin and Ethereum and others. So pay attention to narratives and um, focus on those stocks because, you know, when you have a, the same setup in a hot sector and a, and, a, and a similar setup in a not-so-hot sector, the difference could be, you know, tenfold uh, in returns. Uh, so, it, I mean, if you risk 1% of your capital per idea, you can you can probably get fully invested with seven ideas. So obviously you need to be selective. Uh, mm. And then in, in short-term swing trading, you typically sell on strengths uh, three to five days after you enter. 
So after, you know, after that three to five day move, you just move to another setup that is not as extended. There is not the three, five, three to five days in a row. Um, but yeah, that's about it. You just pay attention to what's currently hot in the market. Uh, you know, the market is constantly giving clues and every week there is a different, uh, different story yeah. that's going on to the upside or to the downside. Yeah, yeah. So are you saying then if you've got a, um, a hot sector, a hot, um, uh, that's got a lot of opportunities, will you spread over multiple trades or in that same sector or do you try and mix it a little bit to diversify more? Well, I would try to, you know, to focus on that sector, to, you know, take at least three, four ideas in that sector because that's what's currently working, even though they're, they'll be super highly correlated and you can probably just pick one, but you never know which one is going to be the biggest winner. It just makes sense to play in that sector because yeah. if this is what the market wants to beat or to punish. It just makes sense to be, to be there. This is where the, the action is. Yeah, yeah. What about then perhaps stocks that have already had a big move? Are you looking uh, for the consolidation and then a, a retracement? Or uh, how do you factor in that, uh, that some of these stocks can have a huge move uh, before you, you might want to trade them? You mean stocks that, that already, let's say, uh, have doubled for the past three months? And then yeah, potentially. How do I, yeah. They can continue? Yeah. Uh, if you study market history, then you notice that uh, in many occasions, in, you know, a stock will double, let's say, in two months or three months. And then it will go into um, some type of, of consolidation. You know, it, like, it, will build a, it will build a new range. It could be a tight range. It could be like a little pullback to its rising 20-day. And then all of a sudden, it starts moving again. I mean, you never know in advance if this setup is going to work. But then you stuck, if you stuck all the, the factors in your favor, you know, the right market environment, the right sector, and the right setup, and, and for example, other factors like a short interest, then the, the odds are, the odds are uh, on your side. You never yeah. know in advance if this, if, which setup is going to work and how far it's going to run. So the market is, is just a probability game. You just try. And mm. You know that when you pick up the right, the right setup in the right sector, in the right market, even, even if you're right only 50% of the time, but you can still make a lot of money. Uh, or just, just, just pick, you know, stacking the odds in your favor. Yeah, yeah. But what about, uh, say, perhaps you got into a trade I mean, you're looking for short-term moves, right? So you want them to be over with pretty quickly and you can move on to your next idea. What if you uh, jump into a trade and it goes nowhere for a while? Do you, do you have like a cutoff point where you're willing to give it a certain amount of time before you move or how do you treat um, trades like that? Yeah, I have a time stop. Right. So you enter a trade and it hasn't really moved in the next three to five days, uh, I'll just scratch it. I mean, depending on what other opportunities there are in the market. Mm. Um, and obviously, it, it depends on your approach. I mean, if you buy in anticipation, it may not uh, break out immediately. But if you buy a breakout and that breakout uh, is faded uh, or is reversed, you know, you just take a stop loss. <laughs> so mm. you just take a little loss and then, then you move on. So uh, it, it's very rare, you know, when if you're buying a breakout and, you know, that stock after the breakout is just going to go sideways. It will either go the going to reverse and you take a loss or it will keep going higher. Yeah. And, and as I said, you, you can sell on strength three to five days later or partially or full position. And then with the rest, let's say half or one third, you can, you can trail. Uh, you know, I like, I like to trail it with a 10 or 20 day moving average. So in some cases, you can have a position that stays for uh, several weeks if the sector is super hot and you think that that instead of capturing just a 10, 20 percent move, you can capture a 100 percent move. Mm. with some of your uh, some of your position mm. yeah i like that so how did you come up with three to five days is that is that based on any kind of testing or research or intuition well i look at the best performing stocks on a weekly a monthly a quarterly basis uh, mm. basically every 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 single day i just pull up the best performers for for uh for those three time frames and i study and then look what happened, you know, after stock breaks out, I see that it will go up, you know, three, five, sometimes 10 days, and then it will be a reaction. 
it will pull back uh, to its you know five, ten, twenty day moving average, or it will just go sideways until those uh, moving average you know catch up with price. Uh, so you basically study, 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 and then you um, past winners, and then you take screenshots of those same setups, uh, and you add them to your library of setups. So you can review later. So it's just based on on experience. Uh, it's not mm. you know based on some sy- systematic study. Yeah, it's just based on experience. Yeah, yeah, and and I think an, uh, a common uh, another common exit approach for swing trading is to have a profit target, whether it's based on the chart or on the size of the stop. Um, but I haven't heard you mention anything about that. You've mentioned trailing stops and time stops. Do you use profit targets? Oh, it depends on the case. For example, if a stock has, has let's let's say gone up from from thirty to uh, to forty five, uh, and then has you know gone pull back to to forty, and I find a really good setup at forty, like a tight range candle where I can risk a dollar. So probably mm. my my target will be uh, forty five, the previous high. That would be my first target, where I'll take partial profit, uh, or or you can just wait and take profit. You know, just like three to five days later, just you can have a uh, a target that is uh, time based, not uh, not price based. Yeah. Okay. Um, we got quite a few questions in the chat, and uh, I know that you have to uh, go very soon because you're a very busy man. But I just want to ask you one more question myself, and then we'll get to some in the chat before we uh, finish up today. So I wanted to ask you about uh, choppy markets. So do you? Mm-hmm. Uh, I guess, first of all, how do you determine a market is getting choppy? And then how do you adjust your trading based on that that kind of market condition? Mm -hmm. I mean, it defines how you you define really uh, choppy because sometimes people call choppy market actually uh, downtrending markets. Um, So so let's call choppy markets um, markets where the averages, the market averages are just uh, constantly oscillating uh, around their, let's say, 20 or, or 50 day moving average, constantly going above them, below them uh, in some uh, form of a range. So in this, in this type of markets, uh, you typically, we typically say that in this type of markets, um, they correct through sector rotation. So you still have some sectors that will be going up and some sectors that will be going down. So if you're going to stick on the long side, you can just be, um, Long the strong sector and you know short the short the, the weak sector. Um, so, uh, but during that type of market, I usually just uh, you know keep a bigger cash position than usual and uh, just risk less. Uh, you know, if on average I risk one percent of my capital per position during choppier market, uh, or especially if I notice that in from in my last uh, 10, 20 trades, all of a sudden my uh, my win ratio has uh, dropped significantly. Uh, mm. Then I'll um, just risk less. I'll risk half a percent or a quarter or a quarter percent of capital, uh, just until uh, things start working uh, better again. Yeah. Okay. Thanks, Ivan. So we've got a, quite a few questions in the chat here. I'm just going to pick a couple out and. Um, uh, let me put this one up on the screen. This is a bit of a clarification on how to determine the sectors. Let me just pop it up on the screen. Uh, is it going to mm-hmm. work? Here we go. This one's from Jace. G'day, Jace. How do you determine the sectors to be in? Do you use technicals such as relative strength? And do you use fundamentals mm-hmm. such as GDP growth? No, I'm not, I'm not using GDP growth. You know, that's a lagging indicator. Uh, I mean, there, there are two approaches, you know, top down and, you know, and, and down. Uh, in bottom up, <laughs> bottom up. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, so top down is basically you uh, look at relative strength, like the best performing um, sectors for the past three months, uh, and then in many in many occasions, I mean, three months is is, is not uh, too short, but it's not too long. So it basically captures where uh, what's hot currently in the market. And if you look at the best uh, at the three months relative strengths. Um, Right now, you'll notice a lot of energy names. You know, people, many people might not believe it, but oil and, and financials and mm-hmm. bank have been one of the strongest sectors for the past two, three months as the market is pricing in potential recovery around the world. Um, so this is one way. And, you know, yep. 
they have various websites where you can we can we, you can very where they rank. They have like two two hundred different sub uh, industry groups, and they rank them based on relative strength. So you can look at the top ten that have the highest uh, relative strength for the past uh, three months. And then the the bottom up approach, where you just pay attention to stocks that are moving. Uh, let's say if, if all of a sudden you notice that. All the uranium stock, for example, are up three, four percent today and breaking out uh, after spending a long time sideways. You know, that's a signal that there's something going on in that sector. So mm -hmm. that sector's industry. Uh, so its relative strength might not be very high right now because it's just starting to move. But if you see that all of them are moving, you know, there might be something uh, major going on in that sector that uh, is like that might turn into a, a bigger trend. So you just need to pick up, uh, pick one of those approaches and see what, what works for you. Mm, yep. Thank you, Ivan. Um, here is a question from Ola. G'day, Ola. What would keep you from entering a position, for example, volatility gaps or anything else? I mean, it depends on the market, of course. Uh, mm. If the market is... Uh, in a correction, in a pullback mode, like I'll be much more careful um, entering uh, long positions because I know that the likelihood of of them of them not working is higher. So even if I like the setup a lot, you know, I might just try it with a uh, with a smaller position size. Just you know, instead of risking one percent, I can risk a quarter percent just to basically fill the water. Uh, so definitely the market environment is the main is the main um, factor here. Mm. Yep. Okay, thank you, Ivan. Here's one from Turth. G'day, Turth. This one's about protecting profits. Mm -hmm. How do you protect from giving up gains when a stock has moved up significantly? You sell on strength. At least like the whole purpose of swing trading is to take at least partial profits on strength. So when you when you have the right entry and that stock has moved three, five days in a row, then you take, you sell one half to two thirds of your, um, of your position to uh, nail, nail some profits. And then after that, you can trail. You can either use a rising 10 or 20 day and then sell the rest when that stock closes below it, or you can just keep raising your stop below the, the low of the, of the previous day. You just keep trailing. Mm. So after that three to five days, do you need to see it move a particular amount, or how do you how do you judge if it's day three or four or five? What are you looking for? I mean, it's, it's up to you. As I said, I mean, <laughs> on general, uh, I say I sell three to five days. It just depends on the on the price action. I mean, if on the third day all of a sudden I see a big reversal, like a big, let's say, a, on the third day the stock goes from. Um, 50 to 55 is the daily range, but it closes at, uh, at 51. That's a big up week. So it's basically a reversal candle. So you, you, you exit. But if you have, you know, mm. three, three strong days where the stock uh, closes near the highs, you can stay longer. You can just, you know, wait a little bit longer. Mm. Okay. Yep. Thank you, Ivan. Here's another one from Turf. Turf's got a couple of good questions today. Just pop it up on the screen. What are some of the things that give you a higher conviction in a setup? You look at volume, volume profile, or anything else? Well, I already mentioned that uh, it's first of all, you look at the right market environment. If the market is currently strong, if all the moving averages are still above their 20 day and their five day are above their 20, uh, if you're in the right sector, and then if you find a um, if you're in the currently hot uh, industry, and then if you find a setup where you have a, a range contraction, you know that you you have stuck the odds in your favor. You still don't know if it's going to work out, but yeah. you know that there is a pretty good chance that you know if you take ten trades like this, probably you'll be right se seven out, out of ten, uh, and then your average return will be higher than the risk you take. So when you have all those things in your favor. It's it's an odds game, as I say. It's a probability game. Yeah, yeah. Another question here from Ola: Are you trading both breakouts and dips? Yes, I do. Like if uh, 
if a strong stock uh, pulls back to its rising uh, 20 day moving average and it forms like a tight range candle, or if it has a reversal candle on near its 20 day, then I, I can buy the dip there. Yeah, absolutely. Mm. I mean, buying the dip is, is a very uh, good working uh, strategy during bull markets. Yeah. You yeah. don't need to wait. You don't need to even wait for the breakout. If if you if you're in the right uh, industry, in a strong market, you can even buy in anticipation of a breakout. Mm. Yeah. Okay. Here's a question from John. Now, you've mentioned uh, you look for short-term trades, but you also sometimes hold some of the um, the more profitable ones for a long time. So, how long are your most profitable trades held? Three to five days shorter term but in many occasions you know i would buy a weekly or an options that will expire you know the next week so yeah and if you're swing, short-term swing trading is short term usually two to ten days so these are my most profitable uh, ones and probably 90 percent of the trades i take um, and obviously mm. per, obviously percentage wise for some equities you know you i have captured much bigger returns just holding longer but this is not my really my style. I'd rather be active and just compound my capital faster. Uh, so I'd rather look and take, you know, I'm taking thousands and more than a thousand trades a year, just looking for mm-hmm. short term five to thirty percent moves in the underlying equity or or more in if there, there's options involved. Yeah. Uh, right. I'm not really looking to hold something for uh, for many months, even though as I said, a good position trader that holds for many months, they can achieve better or the same returns as a good swing trader, but the difference is in the drawdowns. That's the big difference. You have to know, your, know yourself if you're able to stomach big drawdowns. Position trading requires a lot less screen time. Mm. So you can do it with just basically an hour a day. Uh, swing trading is, is very demanding. It's, it's similar to intraday trading, basically in terms of uh, demands of how much hours you need to spend a day. Hmm. But it's, it's not for everyone, so. Yeah. So when you're doing your trailing stops, are you using intraday charts or daily chart, or what data are you looking at to figure out where to put your trailing stops? I mean, you either use, you can use a 5 or 10 or 20 day uh, exponential moving average, and then you can sell if that stock is five minutes before the market close. If that stock is going, you see that it's going to close before uh, below those averages, then you can sell at the end of the day, or you can just sell the next morning. Uh, that's what I u- that's what I usually use. Uh, hmm. Okay. And in, in, and in some cases, you can just keep trailing your stop um, below the lows uh, of the previous day, uh, previous day below the previous day's low. Just keep trailing them. Um, but if you want to capture a bigger move, a multi-week move, it's better to, to use a stop on a closing basis. Let's say if you see that that stock is about to close below your whatever 20 day, then you sell at the last five minutes for the next day. Mm. Yep. So you escape the, the intraday uh, uh, volatility. Sure. Okay. Uh, here's a question from DV. If multiple players are setting up within one sector, do you spread 1% to 2% risk across the basket or take a full risk on each? Full risk. I mean, usually my risk is about 1% uh, per idea. So, you know, I, I, if I see multiple uh, stocks from the same um, uh, industry uh, setting up, I'll try to take three or four of them uh, with about the same risk. I mean, obviously, if you take four ideas with one percent risk, that's four percent risk for that for that sector. But you want to be in a currently hot sector. You know, it, it could be on the long side or on the short side. Uh, but uh, being in the right sector, it's it's a match. Mm. So, as I said, it's very important to stack the odds uh, in our favor, and then that's why you look at the market and then the the industry. And then the individual stock setup. Yeah, yeah. Now in a chat today, you've touched on the uh, the psychological aspects of 
trading a little bit, but we've got a, another question here from Perth on the psychological side of trading. What advice or psychological advice would you give to yourself if you were just starting out or starting over? Um, I mean, I would concentrate all my efforts into learning uh, one setup. And uh, I would try to be uh, in the currently hot uh, sector industry. Because, you know, why, once you're in the right industry, a, a lot, you make a lot less mistakes, a lot fewer mistakes. Uh, because even the weakest stock in the, in, the, in the right industry can outperform, you know, the strongest stock in an average industry. Mm. So figuring out, you know, one, one, once you know, the, you know when to be aggressive, you know, in the right market environment and where to go, you know, which industry, a lot of those psychological mistakes, you know, will are not going to be there because you know you'll be you'll be in the, with the right vehicles in the right market. Uh, obviously, it's important to use um, proper position sizing. Don't put all your money into one uh, stock. Doesn't matter what if everything is stacking up. Still, don't put all your money in one stock. I, I typically don't put more than fifteen percent of my capital into any one idea. Uh, so, position sizing is super important. Um, take your stop losses. Just you know, if if your stop is hit, just take the loss and move on. Uh, so because a four or five percent loss can easily turn into a twenty twenty five percent loss, which is gonna not only damage your capital, but it's gonna damage your confidence. Yeah. And when that happens, then you're not gonna be able to take other trades. You're gonna miss other opportunities. So that one tiny mistake is gonna snowball into so many other mistakes. Uh, so you have to ruthlessly, you know. You know Take your small losses and just move on. And then, if you notice that all of a sudden you're taking way too many losses, just, you know, just take a little, take a break. And maybe you're not trading with an edge, or maybe the market environment has changed. So you need to just step back and observe. Hmm. Yeah, great advice there. Thank you for sharing that, Ivan. Um, we'll do uh, one more uh, question here before we start wrapping up, because I know you've got another appointment just after this. Um, so this one is from M Squared Trader. It's just come in. What resources do you use to help gauge the market? Do you have a general routine? Yeah, and pay attention to um, where the strength and the weakness is, and then you connect dots. I mean, um, about ten days ago, when I noticed that you know the the market were relatively, um, the tech stocks were relatively weak, but all, but uh, all the recovery stocks, uh, airlines, hotels, leisure stock. When when I see all of them moving up, you know that's telling me that there is there is a narrative going on. There is yeah. uh, this is what the market maybe is trying to price in going back to normal maybe in the next six to twelve months, much earlier than people expect uh, things to go back to normal. So you just pay attention to price action and you just try to connect the dots. And in and in some cases, some of those industry moves they last multiple months, like it was with solar and with uh, electric vehicles, all those trends, they lasted for many, many weeks. Uh, mm, yeah. So you say... Attention to, to yeah. Sorry. I mean, it, it's mostly experience. It's mostly experience that when you just, uh, when you've been trading for so long and then you're paying attention to how the different sectors are connected and what is the current narrative, uh, and then you know where to go. Mm. Okay, so it's all based on the chart. You don't use any external resources to help drive your decisions. Is that what you're saying? What do you mean external? Uh, well, the, I guess the question from M squared said, what, what resources do you use? So maybe there's an implication there. Do you follow current affairs and the news and, and let that help drive your decision as well? Or is it just purely just the momentum in the chart, in chart patterns? I mean, I follow some of the what's going on on Twitter. But, you know, I follow, I don't know, a hundred and something people. So I, I follow what people are saying there. But they mostly, the most important thing is price action. You just pay attention yeah. to price action. That, that's the most important thing. Okay. Thank you, Ivan. Uh, now, we've had a couple of questions on how people can learn more from you and uh, one from Turth if you have a trial to your services. So if you want to um, just share how people can get in touch with you, how can they learn more from you? Um, that'd be great. I mean, people can follow me on uh, on Twitter. It's Ivan Hop too. 
uh, or they can read, uh, they can go to my website, ivanhoff.com. Uh, I've written several books. You know, if they go to my website, they can, or you can go to Amazon and just type Ivan Hoff. Uh, you can see them. So you get familiar with, um, with my approach because it might not be for you. Yep. And um, yeah, I, I do have a educational service where I share you know, ideas in uh, commentary. Uh, there are no free trials. You can just try it out for a month. It's cheap enough and see if it's for you. Or you can just look at some of the sample uh, content that I've shared and just see if it's for you. Yep. Okay, excellent. And by the way, the um, you do have a swing book. It's, I think it's called Five Secrets to Highly Profitable Swing Trades. Is that, that's correct? I think so. And um, it goes yeah, into yeah. a lot. That's one. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And obviously the crash book and you've got a couple of others there. So go check them out. They're obviously going into more detail about swing than, you know, we've just breezed through in half an hour. But, uh, you know, um, thank you very much uh, for your time today, Ivan. It was really great to uh, speak to you about swings. We've got some uh, good comments in the chat here. Um, so we'll just put up a couple here. This one is from Turf. Thank you very much. Very helpful session. Thank you. Uh, we've got uh, M squared here. And we've got a, um, some others as well. So, yeah, thanks a lot for that. And uh, for, thank you for uh, everybody for attending today and joining us. And we've got some good questions and comments in the chat. So appreciate your input there. And uh, if you like what you see, don't forget to hit subscribe and the little bell uh, icon or notification so you don't miss out on any um, other material or content that we release in the future. So thanks again, Ivan. Uh, wish you all the best. Enjoy the markets. And we'll catch you again soon. Thank you so much. All right. All right cheers. Thank you, everyone. Cheers. Bye-bye.